So last week, of course, was a pretty crazy video game news related week. There was a bunch of different stuff to talk about. We had Google Stadia stumbling out of the gate. I don't care what anyone says. There are so many problems with Google Stadia that I just don't think it's going to be very successful. And then, of course, you had Sony talking about their Nintendo Direct style presentation that will be happening today on Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. You had Microsoft talking about their Nindy style presentation on tomorrow, Tuesday, the 26th. And then you had a Nindy's Direct with Nintendo showcasing all these awesome Nindy games. So so it was a really good week for video game news last week, and this week is already heating up in terms of what's going on. The Wall Street Journal is now reporting that two new Nintendo Switch models are coming to us this year, and there's a lot of information to digest and a lot of interesting things that I've sort of figured out about these two different SKUs. So what's going on? What are these two different SKUs going to be, and should we trust the Wall Street Journal? Sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into the news, baby. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! To briefly catch you up to speed, you might remember that late last year, the Wall Street Journal started talking about that Nintendo was releasing a revision to the Nintendo Switch model. And there were two different trains of thought with this model. One with train of thought was going to be that this was going to be a successor to the 3DS, a cheaper Nintendo Switch model that will probably get more people in the door with the Nintendo Switch. The other train of thought was that it was going to be a Switch Pro model, a beefed up model of the Nintendo Switch that would run games better and potentially have better specs than the baseline Nintendo Nintendo Switch model that we have. But people were pretty much divided into those two camps. If you watch my videos on the subject, I kind of went back and forth. Initially, I figured it was just going to be a cheaper Nintendo Switch model, a essentially Switch Mini, but then I thought maybe it could be a Switch Pro. We actually got some information that we have to talk about today that sort of ties into this train of thought with the potential Nintendo Switch Pro. But now, according to the Wall Street Journal, both of these are going to be coming. So according to the Wall Street Journal, at least one of these models will be releasing this summer. The first one they talked about was the cheaper option, the basically Switch Mini, and that one of the things it will lack is the vibration feature that's featured in the HD Rumble for the Joy-Cons, which is leading many people to believe that they won't be detachable Joy-Cons, and I think that's a pretty safe bet. If Nintendo is wanting to cut down on the price of a Switch Mini system, you probably wouldn't want to have detachable Switch Joy-Cons with this system, because if you build it into the system, it's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper. I'm sure the screen will probably be a bit smaller than what we see on the Nintendo Switch currently as well, but really it sort of makes sense for them to do something like this. If you're doing a cheaper Nintendo Switch model, you're trying to go after that Nintendo 3DS audience because that Nintendo 3DS audience is a big audience. The Nintendo 3DS sold over 80 million systems worldwide and is still selling in various regions across the world. So to have a cheaper option for the Nintendo Switch to get people in the door, I think is a very important thing. Now, yes, there are some games that were require you to detach your Joy-Cons in order to play them, games like Super Mario Party for instance, but I don't think it would be that big of a deal for people. If they have to miss out on a few different games in order to get a cheaper Nintendo Switch system, I think that's a good thing. I think people will gravitate towards that, and if they miss out on a few games, oh well, not a big deal. I'm sure there will be a way that you can actually attach additional Joy-Cons to the system as well when you're playing in tabletop mode or something like that, so it seems like a really smart decision for me. I think it would be very successful, and it may actually encourage people to pick up a second Nintendo Switch because one of the complaints about the Nintendo Switch is of course the size of the system. A lot of people, although it is designed to be both a home console and a portable console, a lot of people feel like that the Nintendo Switch is just a bit too big and a bit too bulky to be truly a portable system. If you're slimming down the system and making it more ergonomically designed, I think that's a really good thing and people may actually want to pick up a second Nintendo Switch system depending on the price point of this thing in order to play their games on the go and not have to worry about damaging their main Nintendo Switch. But of course, the more interesting of the two subjects, at least to me personally, would have to be the fact that Nintendo is indeed working on a more powerful Nintendo Switch, a Nintendo Switch XL or Nintendo Switch Pro, as some people are calling it. And honestly, that would make a lot of sense to me. A lot of people seem to be under this mindset that Nintendo Switch's next system, the Pro system, is going to have its own library of games. And I think that's just silly. Although we did see things like this with the Nintendo 3DS, where they did multiple SKUs of the system, where you had the 3DS, the 2DS, and of course the new 3DS. 3DS lineup of systems. The new 3DS lineup of systems did have a few exclusive games, but I don't think it was lucrative enough for Nintendo to want to go down that avenue completely with this new Nintendo Switch system. You're really alienating a lot of customers when you do something like that, and although there is incentive to upgrade to something like that, a more powerful system, I don't feel like the incentive would be enough to warrant its own library of games. Now, on the flip side of that, I do think that there will be Switch Pro enabled games, or whatever they end up calling the system, and one thing that's very interesting 
interesting about this is that the most recent Samurai Showdown game was confirmed for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Well, today a new announcement came out saying that the game will also be coming to the Nintendo Switch and Steam in quarter four of 2019, this year. Now, what's interesting about that is when I was sort of going back and forth between the Switch Mini and the Switch Pro model, one of the things was sort of hinging on the fact that supposedly at an SNK presentation, SNK said something about a Nintendo Switch Pro model, and the next Samurai Showdown will be would have enabled features that would take advantage of this more powerful system. Now, of course, after that came out, a lot of people weren't able to sort of verify that information was given, and a lot of people chalked it up to a mistranslation. But now that we're seeing Samurai Showdown come out in quarter four 2019 for the Nintendo Switch, after supposedly this new Samurai Showdown wasn't even going to be coming to the platform to begin with, and now it's coming out, and now we're getting these rumors about a Nintendo Switch Pro model, I think that's sort of proof that there is definitely going to be a Nintendo Switch Pro model. I don't think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden SNK is talking about Samurai Showdown coming to the Nintendo Switch, and there supposedly was going to be Switch-enabled features, or Switch Pro-enabled features, in this version of the game, and then all of a sudden, now we're getting all these rumors about a Nintendo Switch Pro model. Well, there's smoke, there's fire, people, and I just do not believe that this is a sheer coincidence. Of course, there are a lot of Nintendo Switch games that would benefit from this boost in power, and you're starting to see even developers do things with Nintendo Switch games. We just reviewed Unravel 2 on the channel yesterday, and one of the things about Unravel 2 was the fact that you could switch between graphics and performance mode. And basically what this did was, if you wanted better looking graphics, you wanted more HD textures and more higher resolution stuff, when playing in docked mode, you could switch to the graphics mode. If you wanted a smoother frame rate, you could switch to the performance mode, which would make for a better frame rate. You're also seeing this with Darksiders War Master Edition coming to the Nintendo Switch. There is a performance mode and a quality mode. The performance... You're also seeing this with Darksiders Remastered coming to the Nintendo Switch. There's a performance mode and a quality mode. If you play on the performance mode, you get better frame rates but a lower resolution. If you're playing on the quality mode, you get up to 1080p in docked mode and 720p in undocked mode, but you do have about half the frame rate, rate that you would on the performance mode for the game. So you're seeing more and more companies doing things like this performance and graphics mode. So it almost leads me to believe that yes, there will be this powerful Nintendo Switch model that comes to the market where you wouldn't even have to worry about that and this developers can simply update these games to run natively in the better modes on the nintendo switch's beefier model like what the timing of this is very very strange when you factor in the fact that all of a sudden samurai showdown is coming to the nintendo switch you have the wall street journal talking about two different models of the nintendo switch coming out one of them being more powerful and now you have developers starting to put these different graphics mode and performance mode in their third party games it really just sort of adds up and i think it makes perfect sense. I definitely think that the smaller Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch Mini, the one designed to replace the 3DS, will probably be the first system that we see out on the market. If one of them is coming to us in the summertime as being reported by the Wall Street Journal, then I think the Switch Mini would be the first onto the market. A cheaper system, probably around $200, that will basically be a portable Nintendo Switch, a fully portable Nintendo Switch, with probably cheaper materials, and like we said, it will have the HD rumble removed, and probably non-detached joy cons and then you in the holiday season you can unload this nintendo switch pro model at maybe 350 400 it's really going to be interesting to see what happens to the baseline nintendo switch model as far as pricing is concerned if they can make this upcoming nintendo switch mini 150 to 200 would you leave the standard nintendo switch at 300 and then do the switch pro at 400 or would you try to bring all of those numbers down it's really going to be an interesting time to see how nintendo tackles this but i definitely feel like we're there's smoke, there's fire. There's too much interesting things going on. There's too many coincidences pointing to a Nintendo Switch Pro and a Nintendo Switch Mini. And now that all this information is coming out, all I know is it's going to be a very interesting E3 2019 this year. Obviously, Nintendo will be taking center stage at this year's E3 with Sony not being involved in it. And of course, you have all these Microsoft and Nintendo partnerships to talk about as well. You, of course, have Cuphead that's coming to the Nintendo Switch. A lot of people are expecting Xbox Live or potentially Xbox. 
Xbox Game Pass to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And then if they bust out these cheaper model of the system and then say, oh yeah, there's going to be a more powerful system as well coming out around the holiday season. I don't know, man. It's a very fun time. It's a very interesting time in the world of video games. And of course, like I said, we have this PlayStation thing happening this evening. We have Microsoft's thing happening tomorrow. It's just a great time for video game news and I'm very excited for it. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of everything. Do you think it's a bit strange that Samurai Showdown was confirmed for the Nintendo Switch in quarter four, right as Wall Street Journal says that there's a pro model of the Nintendo Switch and a cheaper model coming to the Nintendo Switch. Do you think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden a lot of third party games are starting to have graphics mode and performance mode for these games? And do you think it is a wise decision for Nintendo to introduce two new SKUs into the marketplace, a cheaper one and a more powerful one to keep this Switch momentum going? And as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. Like I said, take a look at that Unravel 2 video to see the difference between graphics mode and performance mode on the Nintendo Switch. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.